gangsters in Daytona. We go through a lot of unique cars, a lot of very, very special cars. But this car is just something that's been so special. It's something I was just always infatuated with my entire life. I wanted this car. This is just such a unique find, such an incredible, incredible find to come across something this original, this documented, this insanely nice. This is the key to the whole thing right here. This is the operation. 426 Max Wedge Super Stalker from the factory, original. The paint on the motor's original. The, the, everything on it's original. Correct carburetors, uh, correct radiator. Uh, everything on this car is just the way it was in 1963 when it left the factory. This car spent more time beating up on Chevrolets and Fords than you can count. This car was the winningest drag race motor for so many years that until Ford came out with a Thunderbolt, nothing even ran with it, nothing even started to run with it. And even then the Thunderbolt didn't beat it, not that often. Has the correct exhaust manifolds, cast iron, they go into three inch dumps that go out each side into an enclosed uh, H-pipe exhaust system that terminates in the back with two turn downs. So it's street legal, it's a car that you can actually drive. Uh, it's a lightweight body, two-door sedan. They weigh about 3,200 pounds. Um, all the ID numbers are on it everywhere, everywhere in the body. On the radiator core support, car's never been bumped. The trim tag in the back, on the, on the trunk, uh, it, it's everywhere. Um, the car is just uh, is, as nice a find as you'll ever come across. Just, it's very, very rare that you find something this original and this documented. The motor has the solid lifter cam in it. It's noisy. Uh, it has more torque than you could ever imagine in a lightweight body like this. Uh, it has the punch button, automatic transmission in it with a 391 posi rear end, eight and three quarter gear, the way they came from the factory. That was standard. Uh, this was pretty much called a body in white. This is a, you could get it in other colors though, but uh, this car happens to be white with a blue interior in it. And the car is just as nice and as original as it was when it left the factory in 1963. This is one vehicle that all my life I've been excited about. I graduated high school in 1964. This car I saw in the showroom just by chance at a Plymouth dealership when I was in 10th, 11th grade. It's one of the greatest cars of all time. A 1963 Super Stock 426 Max Wedge Plymouth. One of the greatest racing engines of all time. The most horsepower, the most torque, the most over the top of everything that was available from any manufacturer at that time. In 1962, when they came out, the 413, it was fast. In 63, they updated it to a 426 Max Wedge and 62 through up till in the 70s, this car was the winningest drag race car ever, ever. This car has 415 horsepower, 11 to 1 compression ratio, cast iron headers, a cross ram intake manifold, two Carter AFB carburetors, full centrifugal advanced distributor. It was made for one thing, to go fast, and it did. This car, this particular car, is a no hit, no rust, incredible find, original Texas car, Texas title, Texas plate, everything from the state of Texas. We have documentation from the day this car was delivered until now. It was completely disassembled some years ago. We have all the photographs of this car, everything being taken down to bare tin, all the original metal on this car, not some glued together car that, that had some issues at one point. The original engine with the original paint on the engine block and intake manifold yet. The, the car is just, it, it, it's, it's done so well that the car was never hit, it, original interior, uh, original appointments on the car, and just a repaint, stripped down, completely disassembled, everything painted, everything put back to as original condition. 
the original color, original everything on this car. Um, the documentation never stops with it. it. It just goes on and on. We have the original broadcast sheet for the car, uh, copies of the original title, uh, articles in the uh, uh, periodicals at the time, you know, featuring a 426 Max Wedge, uh, the addendum to the Chrysler owner's manual for the 1963 Plymouth specifically stating everything about the 426 Max Wedge car, the engine. Not really made as a street engine. <clears throat> the original tags showing the antifreeze from the factory when it was new. The original inspection tag passed whenever it was new. It's a 391 gear car with Posi as they came from the factory with the correct size 14 inch tires on the car even in a bi-supply the way it came. This car is, is just documented to the nth degree. Again, all the photographs from way back when until now. Uh, the service manual, the spec sheet, everything on the 426 Max Wedge. And the most important thing, the car is in the Chrysler Museum Registry. This particular car with this serial number and it's featured in and, and numbered in Daryl Davis's book on 426 Max Wedges. This car is documented and an authentic, real car. Very rare find. You, you just can't find another one like it. Uh, I couldn't be more excited about this car. And the car sounds and runs and drives just as what you see here. It's an incredible piece of history. It's an incredible car. And it's an icon in the world of drag racing. There's probably never going to be another car that duplicates this car's wins. And it's available here at Hanksters at a reasonable price. Titles through the years. Just all documentation. Daryl Davis. Original title for the car. Original stampings on the uh, top of the engine block. Day code correct, original paint on the engine yet, and the intake manifold. Day code of the car, it's a 63, motor was cast 10.4 of 62, max wedge. This original car tracking sheet from the car. There's that uh, IBM card again, same thing, showing the serial number of the car produced. The number on the back of the car showing where the uh, serial number on the back of the uh, behind the seats is. Very legible. The serial numbers in all the right places in the car. Original floors in the car, original everything before it was restored, cars stripped down, painted, bare, not down to bare tin, original paint in places yet. Car being sanded and prepped for paint, car after being painted, everything stripped down, bare body shell. Being back assembled, axles, there's the rear end, eight and three quarter, on 391 gear set. Gauge is being freshened up. Needles being brightened back up again. You see the firewall, everything is correct. All the original sparsely sealed car that they did on the 426 wedges. They were as light as could be. They didn't come with sound deadener. Front K member. Parking brake assembly. Cross rim intake manifold with the engine intact in the car. There's the car uh, interior dashboard. Car upon final assembly at the shows. Completely documented car. The original, original Plymouth broadcast sheet for the car, 1963, showing all the different models that they made in 1963. Maximum performance, no car super stock drag racing, which I've had one of these for years myself, but that's a that's the real book, everything you want to know about super stocks from day one. Service bulletin, shop manual type service bulletin for 426 super stockers, max wedge cars. Daryl Davis book, 
listing all the Max Wedge cars. Kind of a complete dossier of everything concerning the car, 426 Max Wedge. Copy it a uh, broadcast sheet for it. Oh, by the way, it is a it, this thing is a real 20,000 mile car, and there's no reason to dispute the car isn't a real 20,000 mile car. From the fit to finish, everything about the car, the wear and the interior, the original uh, tar paper floors in it, uh, everything shows wear as a 20,000 mile car. This was an addendum to the uh, owner's manual. The standard owner's manual didn't list anything about a 426 super stock car. Plymouth called them a super stock, uh, Dodge called them a Ram Charger. But this is everything specific to a 426 Max Wedge specific uh, specification wise. We have everything for this car, everything. This is a great find. Now these cars also came with very minimal, minimal sound deadener and sealant from the factory. They even went as far as to cut out all the structural bracing from the center of the hood. You see it's all gone, it's all cut out from the factory so that you could get a set of air horns with foam around them and seal them to the hood and then put a Mopar scoop on it if you wanted to do a ram air system with them. They even took that into account when they built this car just for lightning purposes and also for sealing the carburetors to the hood. It's just how far Chrysler went to be number one in drag racing and they accomplished it. The seams the paint, the fit, the finish, everything on this car is just absolutely stunning. If you look at the body seams, and back in 1963, <laughs> quality wasn't job one for these people, that's for sure. But this car fits together so well. All the original tin on it, all your software around your parking lights, around the headlights, the grill, everything's finely polished and clean. The chrome on the bumpers is obviously better than it was when it was ever new. It has the original Plymouth decal on the hood. Everything, even the chrome going back is nice. Hood lines up on both sides, across the back, everything fits as though it, it should. Has the correct wipers on it, has the correct wiper arms. Just a plain Jane car, that's what it was made to be. No tinted glass in it, no power steering, no power brakes. No air conditioning, it wasn't even offered with air. Um, the car is just a, it, it was a purpose built vehicle. And you got the very best of that, that vehicle right here in this car. You know, again, a purpose built car. It's not fancy in any way. It's as plain Jane as you can get. It's a 1963 Plymouth Savoy, two door post coupe, the lightest body that was available. 116 inch wheelbase, very, very short wheel, wheelbase. Dog dish hubcaps, 14 inch wheels, bias ply tires. Uh, the, the software of the car is all finely, if you can tell that around the windows, everything is just beautifully polished. Uh, the, the, the doors fit as they should. The, the hood, the, everything on this car fits absolutely gorgeous. Chrome on the door handles, the same way, just a foot deep. Everything on this car fits and closes as fast as it should. It's a, it's a lightweight 3,200 pound car. Again, no tinted glass, no frills, no nothing on this car. It was made for one purpose, to go fast, and it did. Quarter panels the same way. Everything is just laser straight down the sides of this vehicle. No dents or dings. It doesn't look like it's ever been marked in any way, any of the tin. All the trim around the back end, the, the Plymouth name, all the chrome and everything on it, the, the stripe going down the side, or the uh, center of the uh, trunk is just as nice and clean and polished as can be. Chrome on the back bumper, the same thing, a foot deep. Around the tail lights, the chrome is just flawless in every way. Seams, gaps around the trunk, just as the hood, as they should be. Nice and straight. And, and gap perfectly. Everything lines up. All your chrome trim lines up as it should. Okay, passenger side, the same as the driver's side. Uh, there's nothing that you can fault this car for. Nothing. All the trim around the back window, polished. Very, very deeply polished stainless, the same as the front. Again, no tinted glass. Hat rack in the back is just as clean and nice as the day it left the factory. Drip rail molding, everything finely polished. 
there's nothing that you can say negative about this car in any way. Everything lines up, the doors the same way line up, the gaps are just as even in the front as they are in the back. The car is absolutely gorgeous. Original door panels, interior, mats. You got a real car here. Look at this. This is a real, real privilege and honor. I mean, it, it, it's thrill, thrilling for me to be underneath this thing. This is a Max Wedge 1963 Superstock Plymouth Savoy. The real deal. Documented up the kazoo. The real deal. Purpose-built car for one thing, to go fast. And that's what it did. It's not a road racer. Very, very thin, lightweight torsion bars on this car. Not made for handling, it's made for lift. Lightweight, small shocks in the front. No anti-sway bar. I'm not concerned about going around turns with this one. If you notice underneath the chassis, no sound deadener, no sealant. It's made as light as possible. No power steering, no power brakes, wasn't even offered. High volume, high capacity oil pump and pan for this car. Punch button automatic transmission. Small drum brakes in the front. Off the cast iron headers, we have two and a half, actually three inch pipes off the cast iron headers going back to a two and a half inch pipe toward the mufflers. But before that happens, we have lake, like dumps that go out the side. There's four bolts that hold a flange on each side so that you can open up the cutouts and run directly off of these three inch manifold pipes before they go into the quiet mufflers. This car is a purpose-built vehicle, just made to go fast, and that's what it did. Okay, it's a real 20,000-mile car, there's no question. It's a 20,000-mile car. Uh, everything is all original underneath. Uh, the paint is white the way it would have been painted from the factory. Again, no sound deadener or undercoating or anything on this car. This is the way they came. Um, original brake lines, original fuel line. Uh, two and a half inch pipes going into the standard cross side uh, Mopar mufflers. Uh, eight and three quarter inch rear end, Posi 391 unit. Um, torque boxes are reinforced for the extra power that this car produced, which was a ton. Uh, a set of super strong springs, which unlike the front that gave you a lot of lift, the rear was actually made to spring you forward, so they're torque biased, seven on one, six on the other. It, it's, it's made for one thing, to launch hard and go fast as it can in a quarter of a mile, and that's, that's how this car was built. Everything on this car is correct. The standard Mopar shocks are still in the back. The standard equipment, uh, uh, original type fuel tank is on it. There's no marks on the frame. No dents in the frame, no jack marks, no pull marks in the frame for being shipped. The car is original underneath. Just an outstanding, outstanding example of, of a 1963 Plymouth Superstock 426 Max Wedge. This is a very rare car.